Tesla Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a brief look at an application called QT DAB, which is a digital audio broadcasting tuner and decoder. Now, if you're not familiar with DAB radio, then here's a little history about it. Firstly, DAB radio is a digital radio standard used for broadcasting radio stations in digital as opposed to regular FM, which you would normally find between 88 and 108 megahertz. The DAB standard was actually initiated back in the 1980s, but it wasn't until June of 1995 when KRK Classics launched as the first in the world DAB station from the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation. Now the BBC and the Swedish radio followed suit and launched their first DAB stations in September of the same year. Now the frequency allocations for DAB across the world varied depending on which country you were in. These range from band three all the way up to L band. Now in January 2017, an updated DAB specification was released which removed all band bands from DAB apart from band 3, which is 174 megahertz up to 240 megahertz. Now when DAB first started out, MP2 was the choice of codec, but around 2005 it was advised to move over to AAC plus codec, which not only used three times less bandwidth for each station, it also provided higher quality audio and superior error correction. This is now known as DAB+. Currently there are around 27 countries, mainly in and around Europe, which transmit DAB radio stations. I'll leave a link in the description of the DAB wiki where you can go and see if your country is supported. Now for those of you that are in the United States, Canada or Mexico, your equivalent would be HDR or HD radio. Unfortunately, the software I'm going to show you will not work with HDR. Now, if you've never played around with DAB radio because you don't own a dedicated DAB receiver, but you do own an SDR receiver, then this application will most likely allow you to receive and decode it. Now QTDAB is a cross-platform application supporting Windows, Linux, and even the Raspberry Pi. There's no need to use any other software apart from QTDAB because it takes control of your SDR receiver. So let's go ahead and take a look at the software and choose our first SDR receiver. First of all, we need to download the application. I'm using Windows 10, so I need to head over to the Releases tab and download the XE installer for Windows. Now, if you're using this on Linux or Raspberry Pi, then follow the instructions on the GitHub page on how to download and compile and install. I'll leave a link to the GitHub page in the video description below. So once downloaded, click on the installer and follow the on-screen prompts to install QtDAB. Once the application has started, you can now choose which type of SDR receiver you have plugged in. The first SDR receiver I'm going to test with is an SDR Play RSP2 Pro. So select SDR Play from the drop down selection on the bottom right. You'll notice a pop up will appear for your device. Now, this is where any options for that SDR receiver will be shown. In my case, I can choose which antenna port to select as my SDR receiver has two antenna ports. Bottom left of the application allows you to choose which part of the DAB band to scan for channels. As you can see here, mine is populated quite quickly. Now, if yours doesn't populate, then either choose another DAB band or press the scan button to scan all of the available DAB frequencies. As soon as channels are found, they'll be listed within the application. To play a DAB station, all you need to do is click on its name in the list there on the top left. You'll also see any text that the station is transmitting, which is normally a brief message, and then the name of the currently playing track. BBC News Weather. Heavy rain spreading across the south, breezy for most, but sunshine in Scotland, highs of 14. I'm Santa Templeton. I'll have a full forecast for you in the next 15 minutes. LBC News. Travel. In London, Cabin Common North Side, the traffic lights aren't working at the junction. Okay, so that was using an SDR play. Let's try using an Air Spy. Now, the Air Spy device that I'm going to use here is going to be the Air Spy Mini. As mentioned before, as soon as you select a different SDR type receiver, you're going to get its own kind of pop up. We can adjust things like gain, which is extremely useful if signals are too strong and you're not getting very good decodes, or on the other side of the coin, if they're too weak and you're not getting any decodes. Always have a look at that green bar there in the middle and make sure that you're getting a really nice strong sync to the digital transmissions. To manageable levels across the board. Fourth, we need to be confident that the range of the, the Spanish national team, um, and I think it's always worth mentioning. Okay, so let's try the Hack RF. So I've plugged the Hack RF in and I've selected Hack RF from the bottom right hand corner. And let's see how well the Hack RF performs receiving that radio. Great films about it as well. Um, and in fact, the the Spanish Civil War was almost a, a rehearsal in some ways for the Second World War because Germany, taking the side of the right-wing Madridistas, um, 
and well supervised. And it will work with industry in the UK. So this next method of connecting to your SDR receiver is quite interesting because here we're able to connect to it remotely using RTL TCP. Now RTL TCP can run on many types of operating systems, which gives you remote access to your SDR receiver using an RTL STR device. In this case, I'm going to run RTL TCP on my local machine and connect a new ELEC RTL SDR dongle into my PC. And once we start the RTL TCP server, we can then enter my PC's local IP address into QTDAB so that it connects to the RTL TCP server. Now in the real world, you probably would have another computer or even a Raspberry Pi running RTL TCP server somewhere in the house or even in another location in the world. All you need is an internet connection or your local network to connect to it. Now, as my RTL TCP is running on my local machine, I'm going to use the local IP address of 127.0.0.1 and attempt to connect to it. Now, once connected, you will see some information showing the server window that the frequency has been changed. Now, this happens as QTDAB tries to scan the DAB bands for DAB stations. Once it finds stations, you will see the station list appear in QTDAB as you did before with other SDR receivers are ongoing and perhaps Yvonne you might want to comment further on this. Thank you Secretary of State. So um, as you say sadly uh, we have a number of healthcare workers who have died during this epidemic uh, and there, the deaths although the number is relatively small each of those deaths is important to investigate. Well there we go guys that's an overview of QTDAB a free download from GitHub which supports Windows and Linux. You can go ahead and try that yourself let us know how you get on with it uh, wherever you are in the world. Until the next video, guys, you take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.